Picture a typical construction site. The heavy machinery and the work trucks filled with lumber and steel. Now picture the construction crew. Hard at work in their day glow vests and hard hats. Their tool belts slung over dusty dungarees. Now picture that that crew is all women. So if you just had a brief moment of cognitive dissonance, you're probably not the only one. Our stereotypical image of the construction worker is male, and by the numbers, it's not hard to see why. Only 11 percent of the construction industry in the U.S. is female, and that includes operational positions. On the front lines of actual construction sites, only 4 percent. Of construction workers are female. Four percent, just one in twenty-five. That's totally unacceptable. But it's also a huge opportunity, both for women and for the trades. A new wave of tradeswomen, carpenters, welders, electricians, and masons, are rising through the ranks, armed with their power tools, creative thinking, and new ideas about who can and should get to build our world. I am determined to help more women enter into and grow in the trades, because these are exciting, well-paying, and essential jobs. More than just an economic opportunity, though, is a chance for women to play an equal and substantive role in the making of our physical world. Construction for many women is purpose-driven work, a career in which power tools represent personal power. I want to walk on sidewalks, cross bridges, and enter buildings that I know were raised by a community of builders that represents us all. I want to live in a world built by women, and I mean that in the most literal sense. I have loved building things for as long as I can remember, and when I was 16 years old. A petite, nerdy, multiracial young woman. I walked onto my first construction site, and it changed everything. As I worked alongside skilled masons and carpenters, learned how to frame a roof and mix concrete by hand, for the first time in my life, I felt powerful. And at the end of that project, I stood back and looked at what we had built—a town park, with a performance stage, paths, and public furniture—and I knew that I had something to contribute to the world. Construction transformed my hopes and anxieties into something tangible and beautiful, something that I could point to and say, "I built that." So I went on to study architecture, and then I worked in architecture and construction management. And as I found myself on job sites more frequently, I was almost always the only woman. And it never crossed my mind to quit because of this, but I did feel very lonely, and I longed for a sense of community.
And over the past two decades, as I've found and built that community for myself, I've realized that the reasons that I love construction are not unique, and that for my fellow tradeswomen, we all walk onto a job site with the same shared sense of purpose. We know that for us, building is both our power and our voice. When I talk to my fellow tradeswomen, they agree that working in construction is gratifying, it's creative, and it's fun. It does not require some stereotypically masculine brute strength. That is what heavy machinery is for. <laughs> construction is mostly problem solving, visual and spatial reasoning, and a lot of communication and teamwork. For women. A job in construction can pay more than twice the hourly wage of a comparable job in childcare or health aid work. And while the gender pay gap in the U.S. hovers around 82 cents earned by women for every male earned dollar, in construction the pay gap is nearly non-existent, at 99 cents to the dollar. Construction and construction management are also among the fastest-growing jobs for women, with clear paths into advancement and leadership. These are also jobs with learn-while-you-earn training programs, making them financially feasible careers to enter or to transition into. The trades desperately need women too. With over 300,000 jobs left unfilled, women are hugely untapped labor pool, and this is a time when the demand for infrastructure is only growing, and new building technologies will require new skills and new perspectives to break from the way it's always been done. We already understand the value of having more women in historically male-dominated spaces, like politics, C-suites, and STEM. What is it going to take for tradeswomen to take part and to take over? We do need a few things from the industry in greater numbers. We need more active recruitment. And more equitable hiring practices, and we need leaders of all genders to step up, advocate for better workplace culture, and to bring others along with them. But our best invested effort is looking to the future. We must create intentional spaces for the next generation of tradeswomen to learn technical skills while being unconditionally supported by a community of other women. So, in 2008, I founded a nonprofit. To teach design and construction skills to middle and high school students, specifically young women of color. Now, nearly 14 years later, that nonprofit, Girls Garage, has taught over a thousand girls and gender expansive youth how to use power tools, <laughs> how to use power tools, weld, draft construction documents, and work on a job site. And together. We have built over 150 pro bono projects for other nonprofits in our community.
when young women walk into girls' garage, they are acknowledged as capable and whole. They are taught by female instructors who are architects and carpenters and welders, who've lived lives and who've walked paths similar to their own. When a student uses the chop saw for the very first time, I'm standing right next to them, saying, "You got this." And these are the things that make the difference. And so, the next generation of tradeswomen, our students, will enter the trades knowing what it feels like to be respected and valued, and will know how to demand it when they're not. I may not have had a female mentor on my first construction site, but I can pay forward what I lacked to the 16-year-old in front of me. In step with other youth organizations and apprenticeship programs, we're creating strong communities of tradeswomen as a microcosm for what we believe the industry needs at a macro level. We're filling their toolboxes with drills and saws and ferocity and joy. These are the young women who will go forth to build the world we all want to see. So when I picture a construction site, they are the crew that I imagine. This is my actual girls' garage crew, the construction crew of my dreams. This is not a pipe dream. It's already a reality, but one that we must name, and nurture, and multiply. It is our job now to demand unconditional support for tradeswomen in their quest to play a vital role in the construction of our world. Thank you.